Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of PJ, Pierre and Joe. Today, we've got Lance Michael, and we're going to discuss the big race meeting on April the 6th. Um, so it's a bit of a different one because we're talking to Lance from Soccer Shop fame. And um, we don't always just talk about betting and tipping, do we, Pierre? So we talk about all sorts of cuck. But I think maybe today for our viewers, we'll go through the card and see what... Uh, what you think about Saturday, what Lance thinks about Saturday, and then what I'm telling you is going to happen on Saturday. <laughs> all right, we're all going to listen to you, Joe. <laughs> Hello, Lance. Welcome. How are you, Joe? How are you, Pierre? Good to be part of your podcast. Hi, I believe, hi, Lance. It's, good, good. I believe it's a successful one. I hope I don't blow uh, your, uh, your, your fame in any way, I, shape, or form. A success, success rate. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, so why don't we just get straight into it, and then we'll talk a little bit about each other afterwards. Um, big race meeting on Saturday. Striker, looking forward to it? Yes. Um, you know, it's always nice to ride in these big meetings. Uh, there's a vibe. Um, uh, it's, it's like we were talking in a previous pod podcast, uh, Skulk Burger. Uh, when there's, Brits, uh, Skulk Brits. Skulk Brits, Skulk Brits, sorry about that. Um, we... Um, People may create a vibe and we uh, enjoy the, the vibe, you know, lift your, your, your spirits, your game. And, uh, yeah, the, the big days are always nice. As, and, and you know what, uh, Lance, as a friend of Piers, he often tells me that's one of the things he misses from the old days was actually as a jockey, he noticed the crowd. They noticed, you know what I mean? They noticed the vibe. And tell me, is the crowd no longer there, Pierre? <laughs> Yeah, uh, you know, the normal race days, you just get your regulars. Um, okay, Turfentine Zorro. is huge. Zorro's so, there. Yeah, Zorro's there. He's there. <laughs> and actually, uh, you know what? Uh, the Turfentine is huge, so you don't see much of the public. But, I mean, in old days, uh, it was full, you know. So, it's something we, we, we lack. Uh, and, you know, how do you get the people coming back to the race course? Difficult thing, especially where the race courses in Johannesburg are situated. Uh, that's that's not helping us at all. Well, it 100%. looks like the Met in the uh, July have the fair share of uh, guests and public. One, you know, on those big days, it's just Gauteng that's battling a bit. Yeah, but listen, let's get stuck in because I, as as a person who's been in racing for a long time, I'd definitely rather be a jockey on Saturday than a fucking bookmaker. First race, Tony Peter. Second race, Tony Peter. Third race, Tony Peter. Fourth Hold race. On, Joe, you're going a bit quick for me. First no, two, I'll agree. I'm just telling you, Lance, that uh, surely, as a bookmaker, you're going to be taking loads of three folds and four folds, eh? Yeah, I think that's going to be the 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 play for the punters. They're going to take race one, two, and three definitely, and then throw it into whatever else they choose. But race one and two surely look like. Very, very tough opposition. They look like they're on their own. No, race, you mean race two and three? Race, yeah, well, race one, two, and three, actually. Yeah, look, he's got that vibe essay from Gareth now. And that's oh, sorry, favorite. race two and three, sorry. Yeah. Uh, race one, I haven't given much attention, uh, Joe. Ja, ja, uh, you know, they got this number seven, so seductive. Looks like a very average horse. A very poor horse beat it on its maiden. So, <laughs> I'm, not, what an idiot. I'm oh. not too keen on that, but um, obviously, uh, Tony will improve on the number one. So, not a great race, the first race. So, I think it's, it's so, very... yeah. So, um, you, you, I think you're going five to two, one to five, and one to four or something. Yeah, that's uh, the Peter's treble, correct. But well, we don't know about the first one. We'll only know once race stays upon us whether that's strong. But we know the other two are definitely serious race horses. They look, they look good, eh? striker. Yeah, uh, uh, look, uh, Alman C uh, is very speedy. Um, the only, I think, the only way she could maybe get rolled is if eleven sixty is too far for her. You know. Um, but I mean, she's been winning so easily. Pistol Pete, apparently, he he he'll be better over even further than what he's been winning over. 
So he looks very hard to beat. But I mean, these are juveniles. Uh, a lot can happen. Yo, and we've been around a long time, we, as we can see by the glasses, right? So we've we've seen some hot pots rolled over the last forty years. But look, Tony, I don't think Sean's going to lay down, Joe. No, Sean Pre won't lay down. Proceed's going to be there. He's going to give it his best shot. He's got a couple of lengths to find, but you know, like Pia said, they're two year olds. They're going to improve. So I think race three we might have a chance. Race two, I don't think so. But like you say, anything can happen. Anything can happen, but but you've got a feeling. Or do do you have a sleepless night leading up to Saturday when you know that eighty four percent of the first three races punters are going to be taking the treble, or do you just don't care? You just play the book. You just play them, right? Yeah, there's, there's no more sleepless nights, uh, Joe. Um, we hope that uh, something along the way comes unstuck, but as it comes, we we you know we deal with it. We don't preempt anything really. No, hundred percent, hundred percent. Okay. So, uh, then we so should. Lance, do you just do you just price up according to the numbers, or do you um? I can say, do you actually study form and come to a conclusion, or do you have other people helping you and say this can win or this can't win, or how do you actually price up? Yeah, the 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 business runs with an odds maker in place. His name's Jason. He studies the form. He does the form lines. He does the times. He gets betting out three, four days in advance. If he's not sure on anything, he'll he'll kind of sit with me and ask me to look at a race. My days of studying form are, I wouldn't say long gone. I've done the form for this particular day because it's a big day. But the Tuesday, Thursday, those meetings, I don't really put the time in anymore. So, yes, to answer your question, we do have an odds maker. He studies form, puts a price on it, and we send our betting out. Only way you we want to... whether we right or wrong is by who backs it. And you know what? They're never going to back it if it's right. But when it's wrong, believe me, they come out of the woodwork. And you're doing it many days ahead of everybody else at the moment, a lot? Yes. Jason does bet in at least 72 hours. He had the Saturday book out on Tuesday. What we, I mean, Monday. Today's Wednesday. Um, yeah. The whole card out for the week. The whole week is out now. Sunday's out. All on the, the website, Joe. So. Yeah. And the website's yeah. just been revamped. For those folks watching... The website's just been revamped. It looks power. The the mobile app's been launched. Not that we're promoting launch, because we want the first three to yeah, win. But on let me right? let me give myself a punt. We definitely <laughs> <laughs> we de we definitely putting a lot of time and money into the the online platform. We now with all yeah. three brands: Huawei, iPhone, and Android, and uh, we're doing a bit of marketing. Um, Yours truly, Ja Damata, is a big part of our marketing campaign and advisor. So, yeah, we're looking to grow the product. Hopefully, yeah, and the next last, time I'm on this podcast, people will know who we are. A lot more people will know who we are. Yeah, yeah. Lance, do you uh, take into account when a jockey's in form or a trainer's in form or you get feedback from other trainers? Do you do you take that into account or, or you just purely go on your own studying or Jason no, studying? No, no. It's all uh, that's uh, that's in the bowl, the uh, pair. So trainers in form, jockeys in form, course and distance. Um, but jockeys and trainers are very big, very very big. Okay. The good thing yes. about Paris at the moment is that they're taking the wrong price about him every time he puts his leg yeah. over. Yeah, well, that's exactly what I was going to come to now. I remember 10, 15, 20 years back, I used to moan and groan on TV. Constantly, because I, I would ride a horse and I would be 12 to 10 favorite, for instance. But the, there would be a horse or two that beat beat me by, by two lengths uh, the time before. Or, for instance, turn over and wait and I would still be favored. And it would it would drive me mad because, yeah, I'm thinking I'm riding the right race. Uh, it's favorite, but I get beat. But my horse has run to form. And yet people looking at me because I got beaten a favorite, you know, so it used to drive me crazy. Listen, I'll be honest with you. I don't think um, Faree has the same pressure you had for whatever reason. I think you were more vocal about it and um, you're a study of form. I'm not sure if Faree studies form. But you're right. I, I feel bad for jockeys who have to get over 
um, false prices and try and ride races where they in their heart know they've got a few lengths to find. But the public just think because they're on the horse, they can't lose. So I do sympathize yeah. with that. Yeah. Now, you, I mean, you've got a job to do. So <laughs> you've got a job to do and money to make. So. <laughs> but as a bookmaker, those are the horses we want to lay. Okay. To be yeah, honest, of course. the ones where they take in the wrong price. Absolutely. You want to lay 12 to 10 about a two to one shot all day long. Correct. Absolutely. Absolutely right. Let's move on to race four quickly, guys. Let's go through the card. Okay, so I sent Mr. Del Pesce a message about a year ago begging him to drop this horse to sprint distances and Fields Rocket. I see they've taken it to Cape Town. It's come back to Grant and it's got a good draw in Strawgate 3 and it's going to run over 1,400 metres and they've gone back to Raymond Danielson. What do you guys think in this race? Pierre, yeah, I'll let you go first. <laughs> well, um, I haven't got the race card in front of me, so um, I, I'm, I'm just uh, thinking out of my head. Uh, like uh, 1400s probably his best game. Um, are we talking about the 1400 though? Yes, yeah, the Hawaii. Yeah. I, I think that is that's his best uh, uh, race. Uh, a sprint is it's just too quick for him. Um, but over 1400, they go fast enough for him to to be sort of outpaced and then come with that, that late run. So, uh, this this track could uh, and, and distance could really suit him. He's 14 to 1. Sandingham Summit's 14 to 10. I know which one I want to be backing. I really do. I, I really like his Anfield's Rocket. I think this is, they finally got him running over the right distance. Lance? But, but Sandingham Summit has had two races now where things have gone badly wrong for him. Uh, he's, he's due a bit of luck. So, um, mm, not a strategy. Good. Guys, I'm not a big fan of dropping in distance, I'll be honest with you. You know, he's a top horse of Sandrine in summer. And, uh, you know, he's gone a 16, he's gone an 18, and now he's coming back to a 14. And his opposition in the race, I think the one's a big runner. Lucky lad, sprint the other day, nothing went right for him. So he'll definitely come on. And the, the Philly White Pearl is getting a lot of weight from these guys. So John one. I think it's yeah. a race. Between you and yeah. me, as a bookmaker, if they take under two to one Sandrin in summer, we're going to have a bit of a dip here. Oh, that's good. Cool. Race five. Race five, I got seven to ten Silver Sanctuary. Madness. She's got all the form. If you're a, a, a merit rated studier, she looks head and shoulders above the rest of this field. Ah. Uh, I just think otherwise. I think the the race doesn't start and end there. I think the two can win it. Also well rated. Marcel, I love the five. I love the I five lots. Three and I respect the five very much. So another one that we're going to be taking on. So Joe, yes, I am going to have sleepless nights. Hoping to God that we can lay these yeah. horses. Who's the five? Francis Ethel struck. Francis Ethel. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's uh like your race improving. I'm riding the this two. Could be um, and I don't know, I mean, she ran a crack of the time before, uh, but last time, she just doesn't want to go, you know. So, uh, we, we're still trying to work out uh, why is she so moody. Um, but uh, my filly should stay. So, you know, I, I, I think the favour is hard to beat, but uh, uh, we'll, we'll obviously try and try and beat it in the, at, uh, in the last hundred, running on. <laughs> Definitely hard to beat, but I, I think beatable, yeah, so... With yours and with the three and the, the, the five. I think it's a bit of a race. It's not gonna be in cold. If you lay this horse no. as a bookmaker, you're not gonna be you're not gonna be doing your money. Yeah, you're not gonna be yeah. Correct. And the next race is race six. Oh, I can't wait for this race, though. I really can't. Um only because taking form and all of that into account, right? I'm really delighted that Pierre's riding this horse of mine again. And I think the way the race is going to be run, I wouldn't want anybody else but Pierre's trade him on Humdinger. No, JP's won two group twos for me, Marco Radwell, whatever. But in this race, eight horse field, oof, I'm so looking forward to this race. Win, lose, or draw. But I'm so looking forward to see what the, what the master could do from the front. 
listen, the master's got no pressure on his hands this time. So he can ride, Correct. Uh, ride the race that he wants to <laughs> as he finds her. So for me, second best. But, you know, Pierce pulled it off before. He's ridden them to sleep. So if it's going to happen, it couldn't happen for a nicer guy. You, Joe. So let's hope it happens. <laughs> well, well, Joe, I hope it works out for you and for me, obviously. <laughs> Uh, I, I just think the miles are, uh, you know, like, she just doesn't see a tough mile out, you know. She she oh, enjoys no. a gravel 14, gravel mile, you know, because she's got that speed, out the pens, got position, and it can dictate. But a mile is turpentine. It's just a, on a, it's, it's a bit of a stamina race. And, and she just, you know, doesn't see it. That, but anyway, we're there to, to try and get the biggest check we can. Obviously, hard to be uh, Mark's horse. Um I mean, yeah, but I really, I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely not worried about Miss Sherry Atkins. Eh? Like, no disrespect, I'm really not. I, I, I think that that Philly, Sean will obviously figure her out eventually, but I can't, I don't rate her as a danger. And Bavarian Beauty, obviously, Tony's doing well, and, and anything can happen with that. But and I hear what you're saying. I'm not, I'm not looking at this race with blind, uh, with blind uh, blinkers or anything you call it. Yeah, I really not. I mean, you know. And I know the gravel, um, the gravel mile is much easier, Pierre. But you know, she, she she really ran two lengths of Princess Carla and and Desert Miracle, eh? and and um, you know some of these horses, I know that they probably get the mile, a horse like Perfect Princess or whatever. But I mean, we are higher rated, and we've got a tough, resilient filly. So I, I'm looking forward to it. I really am. Yeah, well, I wish you well, Joe. She's a lovely Thank horse. Thank you very much. And so honest. Yeah, so, she's like that. If you don't win it, you run second. Thank you, Brian. Right, the sprint. <laughs> are we going to roll the dice? Or are we going like to go right? Here, guys. I like the two very much. I think there'll be pace in this race and the stables in form. They will appear to answer your question. The Spice Stable had a winner today in uh, Gravel. They just had a winner a race or two ago. Um, Dice is becoming a little bit uh, unpredictable. He's done a lot of mileage. Thunderstruck's really doing well, but again, done a lot of mileage. A lot of pace in the race. And then there's going to be the bottom weight, the filly. I don't know, the last filly to win the, the sprint was National Colour. I don't think this is as good as National Colour. I like the two very much. Everybody will say, but never thousand meters too short. But I think if they go quick, this is going to be flying. Yeah, Lance, I'm I'm being against you. Yeah, uh, I've ridden him before. In fact, I rode him last year in a in a computer form sprint, and he finished second. He just doesn't have the the gate speed. He doesn't come out very fast, and he's he's like a tall, big horse, and he like he just can't get into. Uh, that top speed early on, so uh, yeah. he, he gets out of his ground a bit. Then he tries to make up ground, but then the race is finished. Um, look, like you say, the stables in form, you know, and that changes a lot of things. Uh, when someone's in form, uh, you have to follow them. I just think two horse race to me dies, and I agree with you. He's very unpredictable. Um, but I mean, he's well, he's a, the highest merit rated horse, so he's got to be the one to beat. And then thunderstruck. Um. I personally think 1,200 more up his alley. Um, but, I mean, he, he won 1,000 at, at Kenilworth. Uh, I actually won on him. And um, so he's got to be the, the, the danger to dice. The filly you don't like. Um, uh, golden Sickle. You know, she should done nothing wrong, you know. I mean, she could just uh, be improving. I mean, and Tony Peters in top form. Um, sure. Hey, listen. Uh, um <laughs> If she wasn't drawn two, if she was drawn on the outside, I don't know why there seems to be a bias at Turpentino anyway, but whatever happens after the first 50 yards, she's three in front. Eh? This filly's yes. super quick. Eh? Joe, Joe, there is a, there's not really a bias unless it rains. Uh, and, and the reason why is the outside or the higher draws, it's higher than the inside. So naturally the water drains towards the inside yeah. and it, it gets dry on the outside. But when it when it doesn't rain, you can get away with it. I'm not saying it's the best, but you can get away with it. Yeah, yeah. I I I really think the filly's a big runner, and um, I don't um, I wouldn't rule out uh, 
I wouldn't rule out a few other horses in this race as well. You know, this this um, this computer form sprint over the years, some of my favorite horses have won this race and running this race. Golden Loom, Seno Santa. It's a race that I know um, from a form and history perspective. Um, there's big difference of for that and caliber off. In the air, Joe. No, there's nothing of that caliber, but 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 it is a handicap as well, right? And um, well, there's a weight no. for age. I should say, sorry. It's not a yeah, there's a weight for age. Yeah, it's a weight for age. I'm sorry, I, I did correct myself. There's a weight for age in four and a half kilos between uh, dice and golden sickles, a lot of pudding. Us. And they're going to have to fetch this filly, which I actually fear is why I would lean towards Lance with William Robertson running in the money. I think he, I think he's a solid... Do you know what? If I was taking a PA, I'd probably more inclined to bank a William Robertson in the PA than go for We're anything else. Cause... Or a nice Ito bet. Yeah, something like that. You know, something like that. Right. Race eight, guys. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. One horse race. Oh, come on, Joe. Honestly, Lance, what Rob, what Robin Clausen has done with the horse is short of, short of, uh, it's just unbelievable. He is, he is a proper race horse, sir. So. Yeah, that's I, my opinion. I, I want to go out on a limb and say wherever that runs, Otto Ruby will be in front of it. Well. I wouldn't. And Jason, my odds maker, Jason Zogby says marauding will be the hardest to beat. Sure. So there's going to be a few opinions in this race. And <laughs> a bit of egg on the face. It's a, it's a great renewal of the derby, I must be honest. Years gone by, the derby's yeah. been a little bit weak. Yes. This year, this year I think it's stacked. I quite like the race. I really like Sean's horse, Hotter Ruby. Mm. He's run close enough to these horses. He's now going over the ground. Uh, Do you think he stays, uh, Lance? I know he's out of a var mare, Pierre, but I don't, you know, Sean would never put him in a race like this if he didn't think he would stay. Eh? Mm. I, I, I've really, I've and I actually found, found that he's quite keen in the race. Um, uh, you know, obviously, if the jock, uh, Drives me softly and drops him out. You know, maybe we'll relax. Uh, Kamala's uh, running. Kamala, yeah. I don't, if, I don't uh, know if you know Kamala's on him, so the word soft yeah, is not soft. part of the vocabulary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Probably um, not. Yeah, look, I mean, Purple Pitcher is the best handicap horse, but uh, you know, he's a front runner. Would he stay there? Who knows? Um, that, that also funny Broncos, not the one I'm running, the other one. Um, Lawrence Burner's horse. Um, be a predator, Pure I think. Yeah. yeah, he's been uh, looking for the ground for quite a while now. Um, you know, I, I, I rode him at 1,400, 1,200. He just didn't have the pace to go with him. And this is, I, I see now he started improving because now he's gone the extra ground. So mm. he could be a huge runner as well. And again, the six is a big runner. I mean, how's that horse improved, marauding? <clears throat> yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, he's, he's been winning easily, you know. He hasn't just been winning. He's been doing it with ease. I mean, Marco Frensberg, he, he just keeps sitting on him to the 200 to 100, you know. So, you must know there's something in the tank there. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a nice race. I know that, you know, the, the, the one's a group one winner already. So, for that, it's got to be a worthy favourite. But I think we got our position here. It's a hell of a race. I'm looking forward to this race. Yeah, yeah. Oh, me too. Me too. Me too. Right, race nine. One horse race. Oh, gee, it's an easy game, eh, Joe? <laughs> Got to go to the bottom white there, street art, just in Godden. Oh, yes. <laughs> you know, I'm biased. I'm biased, Lance, I'm biased. No, but you got a chance here. There's no doubt in my mind you got a chance. Yeah, let's hope he runs well. Let's hope he runs well. I think at best it can fill the money. I have a fancy here, guys. I don't know. I know it's a tough race. I'm not mad about Royal Victory. Um, not mad about the two. Jason's very, very keen on the one. Uh, Jason. Striker. Says, yeah, Striker, very, David King. Very, very keen on it. He says the Galdins, it's a different horse. Um my fancy in the race, you, you you may laugh at me, but 
is the 14 to 1 chance. I don't know how many chances I've given it. Safe passage. Yo, unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, I've been at a lot of chances, second in the in the summer cup, and but I just got a feeling this might be his day tomorrow, uh, Saturday, in sure. a very, but very open race. The only good thing about safe passage, and no disrespect to the owners or to my friend Mike, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, is they've started saving form. Safe passage has started saving form grids color because <laughs> they used to have to paint it in green, red, and yellow. Now they just paint its form in white. I mean, yo, something's wrong with this also. I don't know what it is, but I know he, he got sick, or I don't know. I don't know the whole story, but yo, that's a good. Oh, look. I'm putting the line through his last run, so. And he hasn't won for a while, but at his best, he's a huge, huge runner. And then, you know what? You got to respect uh, Son of Raj. He's going to be running on. He's got, uh, you know, in best form. He's got a small chance. I, I think it's a difficult race. Look, Tony, I, I would think Tony, Tony's Meridius will run well. Hopefully, Street Art will run well. And it breaks my heart to say this, but Puerto Manzano is a proper horse. He's a proper horse. And he loves yeah. the, he loves, loves the, yeah, horse and track. So listen, the two horses I've given you are Hiroshima, but that's the type of race it is. They're horses that, yeah, hundred percent, in their best form they can win. And you know, there's a couple of weight swings, yeah. So you know, know, every podcast we do, we do ask one or two controversial questions. Do you remember Puerto Manzano's debut? Yes, I do, very, very well. Because I know how much I was standing the stable companion for. Oh, really? Yeah. There was a bit of controversy that day, I think, if I remember I think it correctly. It was called Thumbs Up, the stable companion. I, it I was called Thumbs Up. Yeah. Really, really well. Thumbs so, Up got the thumbs down that day. Yeah, they did heat it. They did heat it, yeah. So you only had to pay off. Yeah. And Thumbs Up was odds on, so it felt like a win. The reality <laughs> is he's, he's a top horse and he could easily win a race like this. And then you got Sean's horse, Cousin Casey. Why can't he win? Yeah. Can I just ask you a question? Are you sponsored by the Terry uh, Empire? No, nah, I'm not. But uh, you know what? I've got such a high regard for the man oh, as a yeah, trainer. Oh, right. and, and Pierre's got a horse with him, funnily enough. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, little... yeah. You got I've two got horses with him, Joe. I got two horses with him. I know that's yeah. that's why I'm down to one kidney. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How, um, how would you I'll, like I'll... to have eleven with him? Yeah. I'd rather. Yeah, no, I can't. I run out of organs. Listen, he's the best around, in my opinion. No, There's a lot good, of good trainers it? out there. He's one of them, and uh, yeah, right. you know, we grew up together. Yeah. Sure, no, he's a big top top. Top, top, top trainer, Sean Terry. The the guy, he somehow, horses seem to go nowhere, nowhere. And then all of a sudden, on the day they arrive, when it's a big day, he, his preparation of horses is unbelievable. Um, and that's why I actually make this uh, this race a three-horse race, in my opinion. Cousin Case is one of them. But unfortunately, he's got a bad draw. Uh, I think he, he does travel in the race. So he's... The jock's not going to be positive, I think not. He's probably going to have to drop him out of the back, which will m m probably not going to suit him to be too far out of the ground. Uh, Peter Mazzano, that's my first choice. I just think that uh, he, he, every time he, he runs a turfantine over the right distance, he, he, he beats them all. And then obviously Miles. Miles, Miles has got a good chance, huge chance on form. Unfortunately, he's a very strong horse. He's a huge horse. He takes you on. Um, it's not a horse that you can control easily, and 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 he, he might be his own worst enemy. But uh, ability wise, he's right in there with a huge chance. Has the gelding helped him? Yeah, I would say it's helped him in the sense that he he's easier to be to to be controlled. But uh, Mark the cock also put on a new bit last time, and he was uh, a a better controlled last time than. When I rode him in the 1400, in the 1400, he was just hanging the whole way, and I was trying to get him onto the right leg to change legs to to start getting going, and he just wouldn't he wouldn't change. Um, and the last time it, it 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 was way better. I mean, I was even able to take him to the outside because we had a little bit of rain. I took him towards the outside, and um, 
obviously the the winner she's main defender last time beat us like it, it jumped in at the race at, at the 100 meter mark it was unbelievable was, but we, was, we ran second and it was a good run and obviously now we're hoping for the for this race yeah. listen right. he's the, the horse for me that i think needs less ground so i tend to agree with you the 2000 for me is too far um casey's cousin casey's drawn bad but he's you know he's in the race with a realistic chance and then the Porta Manzana and anything it's that type of race yeah, yeah. right what about the lucky last guys not a nice race yeah I don't I don't really have any majors in the way of offerings I think it's five six to one the field uh Pierre have you got a run in the race I'm just looking no, at again Sean's got Nebras. I see he's had a good few preps. Uh, 2850, that's going to be in the race. Uh, no, I don't really have much to offer here. Any, Joe, you? I like two horses here. I like Ipso Factor. Yes. Um, and I really like uh, Rulebook, Alec Led's horse. I think 50 kilos, Caden Brewer's riding well. Alex, a genius trainer. Um, yeah, the horse is a global, global, global view out of a magician mare. This horse is, I mean, this horse should have been running hurdles in England, to be fair. It made its debut. This horse made its debut over a mile. So that just tells you, um, you know, um, that this horse and is better. The great together. ranks are very, very weak. So 50 kilos, yeah. you know, versus 60 of Nebras. It's going to feel it's like big, a Yeah, it's a big, big swing there, too. Yeah. Yeah, so, so yeah, it's, it's, I, uh, I think, yeah, I, I think it's a very open race. Um, I won on that horse last time for uh Crawford, uh, Ray Crawford. Um, he won quite a good race, and uh, uh, James was uh, the assistant was quite uh positive that day, and he thinks the horse will go even further. So, he could be a nice each way bet. I'm not saying he's gonna win, but he could pop, pop up and win, but you could at least run a place, okay. All right, so let's have Maple in the race. Yeah, we haven't even discussed the favourite, Red Maple. Yeah. Sean's horse. Very, very difficult end to the day. Uh, you know, the guys looking for to get out, yeah. lucky loss. Good luck to them. Yeah, 100%. Um, nice day's racing, though. It is a great day's racing, and it's it's good to see good racing in, in Gauteng, and, and it's, all, it's all really good. Um, lads... I would be devastated if I didn't say that we should um, pass our condolences to the young lad who lost his life in Australia. You guys know I live in England, and this young jockey, Stefano Churchy, unfortunately, we lost him, um, 23 years old. As much as we love the sport, she's a stuffer. Yo. Just to refresh my memory, Joe, what happened? No, he fell at Gosforth Park in Australia. He's a, 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 a Sardinian young lad, jockey. Mm -hmm. Rode in England for Marco Botti. Rode very well, 100 winners. And he lost his life yesterday or the day before. Terrible. Um, from a and fall. I would have, from a fall, yeah. And I, I wouldn't have done this podcast without sort of sending out my messages to his family. Whether they watch or not, I wouldn't know. Um, let's lighten it up a little bit now. So let him rest in peace. Uh Striker, on a day like Saturday, in the past, you would have ridden every race. Richard, I see, has got a ride in almost every race. I think every race, actually. Um, do you miss those days? Um, I don't enjoy having uh, 9, 10, 11 rides. Uh, I mean, I, I, in the past, when July day or Met day, uh, there were times I, I got off because you've, you've, you've got too many rides on a day. You start early, uh, you have to be there an hour before the first race, and then you gotta, then you ride right through till the, the last race. You've had to diet maybe, or you've been sweating yeah. it's through the day. Uh, it, it, it's a killer. So obviously uh, you push through as far as you can, and uh, if you feel that your horse has got a chance, you try the extra race, but you you can feel all your energy levels dissipates towards the end of the day and uh, so i'm okay. quite happy like saturday i've got six rides that's perfect for me at the moment yeah perfect and lance bookmakers often get 
called all sorts of things, but I know you. You love racing. Like, actually, you love racing. So yeah, it's it's you know what we in the the betting business and you know as I don't know if the guys out there know we got betting shops and you know we bet to all the the lower LSM and those businesses kind of run themselves you know they got systems in there that keep things at, at check and so if I didn't have racing if I didn't have the the trading room. I don't really know what I do, to be honest, because I'm not oh, much yeah. of a golfer. Yeah, shit golfer. Yeah. <laughs> Worse on social media. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm starting, I've started paddles, so I'm enjoying that. Unbelievable. So, yeah, I, love I love my racing. I enjoy trading. I enjoy laying beds. I enjoy the thrill of it, yeah. yeah. But you it, love racing. But you love racing. Yes, I do. I mean, exactly. I own a lot of horses now, which I'm not really in that position. I've never been in this position for years. I've been in the game 28 years. But you know what? I, I'm now owning a good few horses, and I'm enjoying seeing them run. And You know, they're, yeah. they're half decent. Hopefully, we can flick something really decent. We need striker back on Champion Warrior. I think that's going to, at the minute, that's our best horse, Joe. I think yeah, on yeah. form lines, that's our best horse. Uh, I don't know what Pierre made of his last run. I mean, it was a cracking run. Yeah, it was a great run. Sean asked me yesterday, 14 or 16. So I'm seeing what him tonight. Going to July? Are you going yeah, to dinner with Sean tonight? No, we're playing paddle. Unbelievable. You can come join Stop. us, Joe. It's at Discovery. Come and play. At Discovery, my feelings on fucking Discovery. They can jump in the lake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 14 oh, okay. or 16. What must I tell him? I think 16. That's what I told him. I said, I think 16, but I haven't asked Jad Damata. He's the expert. But I, Yeah, he's, he knows it all. <laughs> I'll tell him I've now spoken to the jock and he thinks 16. Joe, what do you think? Jad doesn't know. <laughs> He said uh, to me, uh, "Put up really good work uh, yesterday morning. morning." And yeah, I spoke to him this morning. Did he tell you, Joe? He told me he put up spectacular work. Uh. Yes, spectacular work. So there's a little tip for our viewers, Champion Warrior. He has another <laughs> tip for our viewers. Listen, Look I need up. to interrupt you, Joe. I don't think spectacular is in Sean's vocabulary. Well, that's Sean's problem. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> um, it put up spectacular work another tip but a little bit of good information for our viewers if you want to get on early there's only one place to get the odds early Lance has already told you so make your tracks toward and if you want to see the greatest jockey we've ever had in South Africa win three races tomorrow come to Turf and Team on Saturday. Because my mate, uh, yeah, but we're airing this over the next few okay. days. So, okay. yeah. <laughs> so, okay, let's do it again. If you want to see the greatest jockey we've had in South Africa with three races on Saturday, the 6th of April, come to Turpentine, follow Glissian Sources, follow Pierce Stratum, follow Lance on Soccer Shop. Striker, you're the best. Thank you, Joa, and you know it all. <laughs> who, loves more, who loves striker mode uh, you or Eric no Eric because oh, I told man. Eric I told Eric that Pierre is the greatest except for Patrick Villanzuela <laughs> from, from California uh, uh, not, 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 a, not at Madeira jockey <laughs> listen I think we should Actually, now that you mention it, Pierre, I think we should, for the, the 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 purists in horse racing, introduce them to Madeira's number one jockey. So maybe we'll have him on the podcast in, in, in yeah, soon. yeah, yeah. Good, good luck. That'll be good. <laughs> Thank you very much. Have a good one, boys. Thanks Cheers for having me, guys. Take care. Cheers. Bye -bye.